Hey folks, a couple of days ago I put a video up uh, showing how I, uh, well I got started on a wind tower anyways, and, and this is a part two. Anyways, uh, you know, uh, in the first video we, uh, and you have to go back and watch that, I'll put a link in the description below, but uh, I showed the first stages of, you know, pouring the dead, you know, pouring the concrete in the holes, you know, and uh, laying everything out, putting the dead men in, all that kind of stuff. And uh, here I'm just cleaning up a little bit, uh, getting ready to mount the winch to, because um, this tower is going to raise, raise and lower itself uh, with this little 12-volt uh, winch I have. So it's uh, it's not going to be any harder than just getting a 12-volt battery, hooking it up to the winch, and uh, and raising it up and down. And uh, that's important because, you know, with a 30-foot tower, obviously, it's uh, if you have an easy way of raising it and lowering it, sure makes working on the thing and doing maintenance in the future uh, a breeze. And um, you're a lot more likely to do maintenance that way as well. But uh, this is an easy tower to build. Um, there is some technical stuff to it. And, uh, you know, I, I hope I covered, you know, most of that in, in the first video. And I'm showing you kind of how the rest of the installation goes but uh you know uh the most important part is of course uh getting all your guy wires on and and uh making sure they're right and uh and so i'm using uh fence wire it's a it's a smooth wire like a 12 gauge smooth wire double stranded <clears throat> and the reason i do is because number one it's ex inexpensive uh, it winds up saving me a ton of money and, and in all reality it's it's extremely strong wire if you do it right now there is a danger when you're actually tightening down the wire with the pliers or you know making up your your loops uh, that you can nick the wire uh, that is a very real danger you know you can nick the wire with the pliers and actually create a weak spot which uh, will easily break in the future if you're not careful and so but if you're mindful of that and you're just careful uh, this wire is every bit as strong as steel cable. Um, I've used it for fences for years, and, and I'll tell you, we, we tighten it with come-alongs, and we get those wires singing tight. Anyways, enough of that. So, <clears throat> um, here I'm just uh, uh, I'm getting the wires on the main mast, and uh, you, you know, you see the gin pole sticking up in the air, and the gin pole is an important part of the whole thing, because that's what gives the winch leverage when the tower is in the down position. And... The gin pole itself has to be have guy wires as well so it doesn't fall and I'm kind of showing that in this video as well um, but uh, it's important to make sure everything's level uh, from the beginning you know so you start on stage one uh, is, is, is the secret to this whole thing you get your four guy wires on stage one and then you can screw your second pipe into the stage one where um, where then you can raise your second stage uh, and begin to attach the next four wires uh, and and then you know the third and if you're going even higher you can you know the fourth and fifth and so on but uh, to keep the technicalities somewhat low this is a 30 foot tower they're reasonably easy to build when they're not too high um, you know obviously the taller they get the stronger everything has to be uh, the further apart your guy wires has to be the longer your gym pole needs to be the stronger your winch needs to be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, so we just kept it short. We're going to see how this does. Uh, you know, I, you know, anytime you're putting a wind generator up, it's a, you know, unless you're in an extremely windy area, it's kind of a gamble as to the exact location. But I, my, the location I picked was, you know, um, I mean, there's formulas where, you know, any object. You know, within a wind generator, the wind generator has to be 30 feet above the nearest object within a certain distance from it. And um, <clears throat> I don't know those stats right off the top of my head, but there are some formulas. You know, to get clean, clean air is the purpose of putting it in the air in the first place. And I will add that you know the cost of this tower is significant. You know, the pi you know everything's going up in price as you guys know with inflation. You know, the pipes individually cost me $75 a piece. I used inch and a half. In retrospect, I might should have gone with two inch, especially with this uh, size of wind generator. I think I'm going to be okay if I need to reinforce the tower. At the top 10 feet, I can do it pretty easily. Um, we may do that in a future video. Uh, I'm just going to see how this thing works. 
but uh, <clears throat> uh, so hundred, you know, seventy-five dollars a piece for the pipe. There's four pieces of pipe, you know. So I have three hundred dollars invested in just the pipe. If you had to buy the wire, uh, I think the wire is around eighty dollars a roll. Uh, if you go with steel cable, you're going to spend um, at least a hundred bucks in fittings and cable, if not more. And uh, <clears throat> and then with everything else. Uh, you know the winch uh, and all that um, of course you can buy these little winches at probably Harbor Freight or off of eBay for less than $100 so I mean you know you're into the tower every bit as much as you bought the wind generator for if not more by the time you run your wires to your house so it is a significant investment is in time and money and um, I just wanted to point that out because don't think you're just going to buy a wind generator and mount it up on the roof of your house, which, by the way, is a really terrible idea. Uh, if you don't believe me, go right ahead and do it. It's just <laughs> your whole house is going to become a speaker and every little tiny noise that that wind generator makes, including the electronic noise inside the generator itself, will be uh, very well heard inside the house. And my neighbors have a similar set up like that all right so that's pretty much it and uh once you get everything where it needs to be there's going to be some adjustment in the tower you know it's gonna lean one way or the other and you have to lower it to loosen the wires tighten the one side and re-raise it and keep doing that over and over until you get them all just about right and we've got it pretty satisfactory now i could use some more fine tuning but we'll do that in the future i'm going to get some some uh some kind of uh, wire tighteners that i can just put right in line and uh you know they're kind of like those electric fence tighteners where you put 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 the deal in there and it, it just cams it and uh because i'm sure these wires are going to loosen over time but it's good enough for now we're going to let that sit for a few more days uh the concrete's still pretty green i noticed so um, I don't want to stress it out too bad, but probably by Sunday we'll get the wind generator up and uh, That'll happen right now Yeah, so those wire tires that I was talking about there um, They're actually made for electric fence and they go in line so you would Normally on a fence you would run your wires and you would fasten them to the post and the wire would be loose and then these inline tighteners actually go over the wire and they're circular in shape and you put a wrench on them and uh, you tighten it and it's got this pin you put in there. And those wound up working pretty good for this. Um, I'll give you a little short clip at the end of this video showing those and, uh, and how they work exactly. <clears throat> But uh, we're just uh, we're just running our three-phase power here, and uh, used a fish tape to uh, uh, pull the wires through the center pipe. Now the um, the wind generator ha itself has slip rings, which means that the um, the wires that are hanging down from you know the bottom, uh, you know, um, they go down into the tower. Don't twist because of the sl of the slip rings, but. I've actually made them where they're, you know, um, oh, what am I trying to say? We're the other way around with no slip rings. And there didn't seem to be any significant twisting in the tower uh, to speak of. Um, and, and, you know, it, even if there is, it's a, it's a simple matter to go out there once a month or something and, and untwist them. But uh, I, I never had to, really, quite honestly, because it's just as likely to blow one way as it is the other. And it's not like your towers or your wind generator is just twisting up on the pole. But uh, I just connected all my, um, made all my connections with wire nuts, uh, which I found to be pretty satisfactory in the past. Um, so that's what I used. And, you know, it's easy to take it on and off that way. And so if you notice, I, it is, yes. I had to redrill my holes here. Um, those holes have to be kind of exact and I got the first ones off just by a tiny bit um, it, and the whole this whole thing's held on by two allen head screws which um, I suppose are sufficient <clears throat> almost would have had rather had something go over the pipe and clamp to it but you know it is what it is and it it's uh, we'll see how well it works the assembly of this is to breeze 1500 
uh, was pretty straightforward. Um, it, you know, you, you could easily do it without having to read the instructions. It, it's it's uh, very intuitive. Um, but uh, we did manage to put the blades on backwards. And uh, that was something you have to work, you know, kind of watch out for. We stuck the blades on backwards. No, we didn't. I mean, I did. She didn't. Yeah, the orientation of those blades are kind of important, aren't they? Um, so yeah, so no, I, you know, and I, I, I've done a review on this and, and I'll put a link to that review as well in the description below on this, you know, just kind of a unboxing and a preliminary review of what I thought of this um, wind generator. Overall, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with it. Uh, the quality seems to be very good. Uh, the price was right. It's hard to, it, it's hard to beat something when there's good quality and a good price all together. And uh, the makers of this have, have thought things out pretty well. I like the looks of this uh, wind generator as well. It just has a sexy appearance, um, well designed, well balanced. Uh, now here I'm shorting out the wires. It, now that's very important because um, it's going to be another week or two before I can actually get the, the power ran to my house and, and hooked into the batteries where there's actually a load under the wind turbine. I don't want this thing just sitting out there freewheeling in the wind. So um, it, it's important to short these out if that's you know a situation that you're going to be running into at least until you can put a load on it and you know that if, what that does is effectively break the turbine you know puts a brake puts the brakes on basically and and it won't turn uh it, it, you know it'll it'll never overspeed that way but anyways thanks for watching this video uh look for part three um we're going to be hooking this up to the house getting it onto our batteries and all that kind of stuff and uh Hey, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and uh, give, it, give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.